Americans enough because I truly believe this. I truly believe this in my heart. Americans want a ceasefire. They want it to stop. You know, when, when I first got elected, Ramallah called me and we had this moment and she's like my little cousin but now she's an adult and she says to me oh my god I, I just we can't believe you you gotta like and I said yeah you know I'm just like what are you know I'm here okay but she says you don't get it Rashida we really thought Americans hated us like the fact that you got elected like she, she just even that like oh my god so they don't I said no the majority of Americans are literally against oppression. They are, they're against occupation, they're against uh, human rights violations. If you just tell them the truth, they will be on our side. So we have to speak the truth. We gotta continue, stop allowing people to police our words, to target what we say. At the end, Maya and Shama should be alive. And if we don't get back to our shared humanity, I don't think we're ever, ever going to be able to come back from this. And to my president, to our president, yes, he's still our, well, hold on. I know, I, hey, I want him to know, as a Palestinian American, is also somebody of Muslim faith, I'm not gonna forget this. And I think a lot of people are not gonna forget this. And it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a threat. It isn't. They, they think we're joking. I mean, I think the White House and everyone thinks that we're just going to sit back and let this just continue to happen. No. The fact of the matter is, our lives are not safe with you or the Forever Peach president. When are we going to feel safe? When are we going to stop funding continued, uh, literally, oppression of indigenous communities? When are we going to say enough? It makes me so angry to have to say it, but I'm telling you, I'm talking to people that literally are like me. They literally, literally believed in this party that was supposed to be inclusive of all of our opinions and our, and our views and our political stance and, and all of these things. But what is got, starting to get really, really, really clear and very loud is that somehow, Many of us in this room, because of our political opinions, because maybe our faith is a certain faith, maybe because our ethnicity is a certain ethnicity, that somehow we're subhuman. That somehow we're not as equal, to, again, of a human to be able to live and really survive and be able to thrive in our country and in the world. It's like it doesn't even matter. And that's what's been really painful. It's just, just continue to watch people think it's okay to bomb a hospital with children. You know what's so hard sometimes is watching those videos and, and the people telling the kids don't cry and like let them cry. And they're shaking and some of you know this, they keep telling them not to cry in Arabic. They, do, they can cry, I can cry, we all can cry. If we're not crying, Something is wrong. And so I'm telling you right now, President Biden, not all America's with you on this one. And you need to wake up and understand that. We are literally, literally watching people commit genocide and killing the vast majority just like this. And we still stand by and say nothing. We will remember this, but all of you, you need to know I swear to God, Allah, you are on the right side of history. You are. You're doing everything possible to save lives. What is wrong with that? Stop it. We're trying to try to politicize this. One, one goal. Save lives. That's it. Do everything you're supposed to do to make that happen. Stop with the bullshit. I love you all so much. We gotta continue, stop allowing people to police our words, to target what we say. At the end, 
Maya and Shema should be alive. And if we don't get back to our shared humanity, I don't think we're ever, ever going to be able to come back from this. And to my president, to our president, yes, he's still our, well, hold on. I know, I, hey, I want him to know, as a Palestinian American, is also somebody of Muslim faith, I'm not gonna forget this. And I think a lot of people are not gonna forget this. And it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a threat. It isn't. They, they think we're joking. I mean, I think the White House and everyone thinks that we're just gonna sit back and let this just continue to happen. No. The fact of the matter is, our lives are not safe with you or the forever peach president. When are we gonna feel safe? When are we gonna stop funding continued, uh, literally, oppression of indigenous communities? When are we gonna say enough? It makes me so angry to have to say it, but I'm telling you, I'm talking to people that literally are like me. They literally, literally believed in this party that was supposed to be inclusive of all of our opinions and our and our views and our political stance and, and all of these things. But what is got, starting to get really, really, really clear and very loud is that somehow many of us in this room, because of our political opinions, because maybe our faith is a certain faith, maybe because our ethnicity is a certain ethnicity, that somehow we're subhuman. That somehow we're not as equal to, again, of a human to be able to live and really survive and be able to thrive in our country and in the world. It's like it doesn't even matter. And that's what's been really painful. Let's give it up for Corey! 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 Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yesterday, I wish you all could have seen. If you haven't, you should have seen our Jewish neighbors from across the country. They made me so proud and inspired. You could hear the voices throughout Canon come through Longworth, through Rayburn. As they shouted ceasefires, they shouted not in my name. As they shouted never again to no one. And mashallah, the Muslimin in the crowd today. If this is not a showing that most America is not with you, Mr. President. Most of America is not with the people that don't want to de-escalate and facilitate a ceasefire. I don't know who you're listening to. I don't know who you're talking to. But you're obviously not talking to these Americans. So you know, I'm going to speak the language that they only understand. Because as we go over a dozen days of pure violence, massacres, it didn't matter how many bodies we showed them, how many children we showed them, how many tears we shed, how many, it wasn't the chemical weapons that was melting children's faces, burning them. It wasn't the cry of a mother or a father who took so long to have his baby boy crying, kneeling down to kiss him for the last time. It wasn't that. Do you know why now all of a sudden there seems to be this small sliver, little, little bit of dehuman, a little bit of humanization? Badri alaikum. When did you decide? Now? Now? After a man mutilated 26 times a six-year-old body, we kept telling you, be, be careful. Stop equating this type of violence with the whole faith and the whole people. You didn't listen. Do you know when they started listening? Is when I told them, I just want you to know, Michigan is an important state where I come from. I'm gonna speak their language. Come on, I want you to be honest with me because it doesn't matter how many bodies, it don't matter how many are dying from a war crime. War crimes are being committed. The answer to war crimes is not more crimes, you Jama'a. It's not, uh, it's not how it works. You want to end the cycle of poverty? Be honest. Be truth tellers. Tell the truth. I'm going to speak the language. Mr. President, Michigan is an important state for you. 
you. So is Pennsylvania and so is Georgia. And guess what, Mr. President? We will not forget. When we were mourning and crying and begging our country to stop the violence, it was silence. It was memos shredded. Don't say de-escalate. Don't say stop the violence. Don't say, hey, apartheid Israel, you're, you got to stop. This is a war crime. You're not following international human rights. No one spoke up. The genocide that is happening right now, as people are staying silent, is the true sad essence of how we're all feeling. This is exactly what they're telling us who they are. And so when I have residents calling me, tell me, Rashida, the previous president wanted to ban us and probably put us in concentration camps. This one wants us just to die. That's how it feels. Shame on them. Shame on them. Honey, I want you guys all to shout where you're from. What state are you from? Shout it. Shout what state you are. We are from all over the country, just like yesterday. Amazing, incredible Jewish neighbors coming together from all around. This is how we got to talk to them. And it is sick into my heart. And this is how I have to talk to them. Not, not the bodies, not the bombing of schools or hospitals, not the fact that people are literally with no water. No, they don't care. They literally are being paralyzed. Who are they listening to? You know what I read today? Mashallah, this is amazing. I am actually like, do, who do I send this to with the administration? Who are they listening to? When I read, 80% of Democrats support a ceasefire. 57% of independents support a ceasefire. We have to talk their talk, yeah, Jamal. Yeah, you want to save lives with me? Eh, go ahead, because this is the way you talk to them. Guess how many Republicans? 56% of Republicans want a ceasefire. So if I have to show them in numbers, we're not going to sit back. Every child that died in Gaza, I'm going to multiply it by hundreds to show up. And if we show up, I don't care. We'll vote for Drake Commissioner. We'll vote for a city council person. We'll vote for a state representative yes. that sees us and stands with us. We'll vote for Cory Bush. We'll vote for people like that that stood with us. But guess what? We're going to remember. And maybe we don't want to vote for either the people that want to ban us or the people that want to live and sit silent while a genocide happens. That's the way we have to speak. Allah Hamim. Allah Hamim Kulim. But they forget. I'm an American, but stem me full of steamy. Allah Hamiha, my son, my city. Allah Hamiha. I want my sister to live in the free full of steam before she dies. Yeah. I want her to walk and pick her olives in the free full of steam. I want her to eat the warm tea, the things that she opens it on her land and puts it in her mouth in the free full of steam. And the Jamaat, the way we do it, we're not going to stay home. Oh, no. We're going to show them we're here. We vote. But guess what? If we skip the top of the ticket, if we feel like the people that want to represent us is going to sit by and allow a genocide to happen, you're not giving us a choice. You're not giving us a choice. So I'm going to always stand on truth. I'm going to always stand in saving lives. How many of you want to save lives? Yeah. When they sit there yesterday and vilifying my Jewish neighbors that came here to demand, to demand, and these are American Jewish communities throughout the country that demand vilifying them, calling them all kinds of names. That's what we speak up and say, what about their voices? And say not in their name and never again. 
What about us? We showed up and you betrayed us. You've abandoned us. That's how we feel. It shouldn't have took, but they have to be dead right now and killed. And he had to mount 26 times. I'm not going to sit back and I'm not going to fall for the warmonger propaganda. The thing that they forget, the thing they forget is that all of our communities come from war, from tragedy, from these horrific. When we see that child, we feel it. And it sickens me that nobody else sees the Palestinian people as they die equally as human. We're not disposable. We have a right to live. We have a right to not have everyone turn their backs on them. And I want my family in Palestine. I wish they could see this. I wish the rest of children can see this. American people, the American people are not all in support of the genocide. We want you to live just like everyone else. Not all of America is with the Oval Office right now or what Congress is doing. The majority of them want to cease fire. So wake up. Wake up, members of Congress. Wake up, the President. Wake up. It is time now for a ceasefire. I want them to hear you. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. They can't hear you. Ceasefire now. 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 my rabbi <laughs> but I want to thank you all so much for your courage because I know it's not been easy I know for me my Jewish neighbors in my district in the 12th congressional district I talked to one of my Jewish neighbors who's a leader in the Jewish community who said you know Rashida my children are in Jerusalem I said my grandmother is in the West Bank with my cousins my aunts my uncles we have more to lose if we don't get a ceasefire, if we don't move towards coexistence and towards understanding this violence is not making anyone safe. So thank you again. I am proud, incredibly proud to stand in solidarity with the rabbis here, the Jewish peace advocates here today calling for an immediate ceasefire and end of the violence. Thank you again for your voice and courage at this moment in time. While there are growing attempts to silence those speaking up, for human rights, even in this chamber, fighting to save lives, no matter faith, no matter ethnicity, should not be controversial. That's right. My colleagues must recognize our shared humanity, the value of human life. There are millions of people across our country right now who are horrified watching the government support collective punishment of Palestinians while the Israeli government continues to carry war crimes by cutting off water, food, and life-saving medical care. I know I've seen the stats. I mean, the polling shows 
A majority of Americans, over 65% of Americans, including 80% of them being Democrats, want a ceasefire. They are also horrified, horrified that our president is calling, is calling on Congress to find more bombs that are being dropped on innocent civilians. Our movement for ceasefire is only growing stronger. I say this all the time, consistently to my colleagues. When they tell me that folks are coming to their offices, I said, it's not me, it's your constituents. It's your residents that are asking you to speak up and end the violence. We will not be intimidated. We will not be silenced. And we will not stop until we save lives. We will continue to demand a ceasefire, demand the immediate delivery of humanitarian aid in Gaza, demand the release of all hostages and those arbitrarily detained, demand every American to come home, and demand that Palestinian people to live free from occupation. 11,000 Palestinians, just like you, Rabbi, I know someone that knows someone that has been impacted by the continued killings including over 4,000 children. I know Netanyahu and his extremist government are now saying that Israeli forces would take security responsibility for Gaza for an indefinite period of time. That's not about safety. The forced displacement, displacement of Palestinians began, as you all know, 75 years ago. The occupation has been ongoing for over 56 years. Perpetuating this illegal occupation will not lead to a just and lasting peace. We already know, we tried. It didn't work. The path to peace must include addressing the root causes of our conflict and ending the blockade and the occupation. Folks laugh all the time when I tell my cousins who are married Israeli citizens that coexistence so beautifully is even denied as they love each other, as they have children together, denied even their existence. To the calling again of a humanitarian pause, know this, let me ask you please, as you all for a humanitarian pause, how many more lives will be enough how many more children have to be killed? How many more families traumatized and torn apart? There is nothing humanitarian about giving innocent civilians four hour break before they are bombed. We are calling for an end to the violence, not a break in the violence. The humanitarian pause is not enough. President Biden, I hope you're listening. I'm consistent in telling this over and over again. You must listen to the voices of the majority of Americans who are calling for a ceasefire now. So today, again, please look to the majority of your residents, many of which supported you. They're calling you to do what's right. End the violence, support a ceasefire now. No, 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 go ahead. I was Come in and speak to us. Thank you so much to Congressman Jackson. You can hold it. No, I don't know if you want to. Okay, so sorry. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your incredible courage. Um, when the councilman called me and said uh, he wanted to put this together, I, you know, the mama bear in me said, are you sure? <laughs> and so, but he's here courageously and brought so many incredible people with him that support this movement to save lives, no matter faith or ethnicity. And I can't thank you all from the bottom of my heart for trying to continue to save lives. I'm proud to stand in solidarity with the courageous elected officials and activists on this hunger strike and the millions of Americans right now calling for a ceasefire and the end to the violence. Thank you for making your voices heard and for your courage in this moment to stand on the right side of history. I know it has not been easy. When my colleagues and I first called for a ceasefire and in this building right behind you, they called us repugnant and disgraceful. Well, let me say this, the bombing of innocent civilians and children is repugnant and disgraceful. The refusal to support a ceasefire and an end to violence in, in the killing is repugnant and disgraceful. Our president calling on Congress to fund more bombs that are being dropped on innocent civilians is repugnant and disgraceful. Netanyahu continues to want to restart this genocidal bombing campaign with President Biden's support. We cannot look away, my friends. We cannot look away, America. We must ensure that everyone sees exactly what the extremist Netanyahu is doing to thousands of innocent Palestinian civilians, especially children, 
who are being starved in Gaza and pulled out of the rubble. The brutality, the brutal reality of the occupation and apartheid has been exposed for all to see. We know that there is a concerted effort to silence those speaking up for peaceful coexistence and human rights of all people. We will not be silent. Fighting to save lives, no matter faith or ethnicity, should not be controversial, especially when the majority of Americans support a ceasefire. 71% of Michigan Democrats in my district support a ceasefire. 75% of Democrats across the country and 50% of Republicans support a ceasefire. So yes, why is it that my colleagues are scared to even say the words, cease, see the word, utter the word ceasefire? I know the United Nations General Assembly vote, voted to support a ceasefire 120 to 14. All of the major human rights organizations support a ceasefire. The African National Congress, the party of anti-apartheid hero Nelson Mandela, supports a ceasefire. The Pope supports a ceasefire. This isn't controversial. It's long past time for my colleagues to recognize our shared humanity and the value of all human life. Our movement for a permanent ceasefire is only growing stronger. And I'm grateful for each and every single one of your voices here today. We will continue to demand a permanent ceasefire, demand the immediate delivery of enough humanitarian aid to Gaza, demand the release of all hostages and those arbitrarily detained, and demand that every American, those are left to come home, and demand that the Palestinian people live free from occupation. The path to peace must include addressing the root causes of the conflict and ending the blockade and occupation that is starving Palestinians. The Palestinian people deserve to live with equal rights, freedom, and human dignity. I will continue to say this over and over again. And the Israeli government has killed over 14,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including 6,000 children. 1.7 million Palestinians have been displaced from their home. When this pause in the violence expires, all I keep thinking about is asking my colleagues, how many more lives? How many more lives will be enough? How many more children need to be killed? How many more families have to be traumatized and torn apart? There is nothing humanitarian, my friends, about giving innocent civilians a few days of rest before they are bombed again. We are calling to the end to violence permanently and not a break in the violence. The temporary pause is not enough. We need a permanent ceasefire now. For our president, the President Biden, please, you must listen to the voices of the majority of Americans and the majority of Democrats who are calling for a ceasefire now. Again, thank you so much for your incredible courage and for those that continue to speak up and say ceasefire now. Thank you. We will call up Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Yes. Thank you so much, Corey and Ilhan and all the incredible doctors that spoke. Um, the answer is not war crimes. It can never be war crimes. So I want to thank you so much for your incredible courage. I know for a fact, many of my friends who work in the medical field, it has been hard to just even merely exist, to merely be in spaces with those that don't want you to speak up against the injustices that you see over and over again when you just turn your phone on and just look. So thank you so much for your courage in this moment to stand on the right side of history. We know that there is a concerted effort to silence those speaking up for peaceful coexistence and the human rights of all people. We will not be silent. Fighting to save lives, no matter faith, no matter ethnicity, should not be controversial, especially when the majority of Americans outside of this institution supports a ceasefire. The images coming out of Gaza are horrific. Netanyahu has resumed his genocidal bombing campaign with President Biden's support. We need a permanent ceasefire now. We cannot look away. According to recent data of a polling that came out, and this is important because, you know, they listen to polling sometimes when it doesn't even matter. But 76% of Democrats support conditioning funding to Israel and upholding human rights. We must ensure that everyone sees exactly what the extremist Netanyahu is doing to thousands of innocent Palestinian civilians, especially our children who are being starved in Gaza and pulled out of the rubble, many in their pajamas. These are brutal reality of occupation and apartheid. 
doctors, nurses, ambulance workers targeted and killed while trying to save lives. Patients are terrified. Dodging Israeli fire in the hospital compounds, literally in the entryway of the emergency entry. Can you imagine? Operating rooms overflowing with dead and dying men, women and children, medical staff desperately trying to save who they can without even the most basic supplies, food or clean water or medicine, surgeries, ammunition, literally cutting children's legs off with no anesthesia on the floor. This one's hard for me. The decomposing bodies of premature babies exposed for the world to see a NASA a children's hospital after Israeli forces bombed it and forced the medical staff to evacuate. Hearing that doctor that was forced out, leaving her babies. It was her babies too. And for them to come back, for her to come back and see decomposing bodies of these four premature babies on oxygen were found eaten by worms, blackened by mold and mauled by stray dogs. Why? Because they're Palestinian babies, you want to look away? They're babies! The dehumanization of violence is horrific. I hate giving them my tears, but I'm not crying because of them. I'm crying because our shared humanity is getting lost every single day. We do not call for a ceasefire. Why? Why do my colleagues continue to ignore the voices of their constituents? They send me pictures of people protesting in front of their offices and I say, why? You think I'm not in charge? Those are your residents. Yes. Go out there and talk to them. Amen. Yes. Talk to them. Meet with them. Sit down with them. They're your constituents. Y'all, the United Nations General Assembly supports a ceasefire. All the major human rights organizations support a ceasefire. These doctors support a ceasefire. Presidents and world leaders around the globe su support a ceasefire. The Pope supports a ceasefire. This isn't controversial. It's long past time for my colleagues to recognize our shared humanity and value all human life. Congresswoman Cori Bush and I should not have to sit on the steps with no authorization to say we're gonna mourn all lives. Both. Israelis and Palestinians, no matter their faith. Our movement for ceasefire is only growing stronger and I'm grateful for each and every single of voices here today, especially my doctors in the Michigan 12th Congressional District. I will continue to demand a ceasefire, the immediate delivery of enough humanitarian aid in Gaza. And I say this, enough. The release of all hostages and those arbitrarily detained by Israel every American to come home and demand that the Palestinian li people live free from occupation. The path to peace must include addressing the root causes, y'all, of this conflict, of ending the blockade, the occupation, the apartheid. Can't ignore it anymore. The Palestinian people deserve to live with equal rights, freedom, and human dignity. The Israeli government has killed over 16,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including over 6,000 children. Over 1.7 million Palestinians have been displaced from their homes. Many of their children are asking, when are we going home? There is no home to go back to. And thousands, thousands are more are missing under the rubble. So I once again stand here to ask my colleagues, how many more lives will be enough for you all? How many more innocent civilians and children have to be killed? How many more lives will you accept as collateral damage? There is nothing humanitarian about giving Palestinians a few days of rest before they are bombed again. We are calling for an end of this violence, not a break in the violence. The temporary pauses are not enough. We need a permanent ceasefire now. We need an end to the genocide. President Biden, I say this over and over again because I hope you hear me. You must listen to the voices of the majority of Americans and the majority of Democrats who work their butt off to get you elected. You have to represent all of us, Mr. President, not just some. Call for a ceasefire now. Amen. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now.
Next, I'm going to introduce Dr. Nadal Jabur. He's an internist, generacus. Uh, I can't say these words. That's why Ger I'm not mad at him. Thank you, nurse. <laughs> Uh, and I know, and president of the Advanced Care Center. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, all.